let me know what is the barometer for good quarterback play statistically. And then we'll go from there. Because otherwise, it's all just speculation and more of a personal fill-in type thing, right? But I think if we were just simply going by NFL statistical standards, the numbers do reflect that he's not washed. Might be old, but even for the quarter acquisition, then you can make a case that he's technically not old for that position either. But that's the only thing. But I like it, though. I like it. That is football, like you said, man. Everybody got their different views on him. Heck yeah. Yeah, if he could do 29 touchdowns here. And 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 I get it, too, because there were a lot of people saying, like, some of his numbers last year were full gold. Like, mm-hmm. Broncos people, like, uh, who was it? Mark uh, Mark Slayer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, fine. But if anything, I, I could look at that and say that was in a system that wasn't really built for him. So if he did have to do some improvisation or – uh, do some things outside of the system, then, man, what what could he do? If he had 29 touchdowns in a mm. system with Sean Payton, wasn't a fit, all this stuff, was missing maybe some of the timing routes that Payton yeah. was setting up. Still did that, though. Still did that, mm. ultimately. While getting sabotaged, like, what, what could he possibly do in a system that's more fit for him? That's my thing. My other part is... And that's why I'm excited for man. him being here and Arthur Smith and all that, because I, I think it's a really good fit. And then my other thing, because I agree with all of that as well, but my, my other part is even if it was all this garbage and it was meaningless, well, why is it that when I look at other quarterbacks, why don't they give me that at, at the bare minimum then? Well, and the thing is, too, like if it if it came at the expense of the Broncos winning games and they ended up going like 4-12 and 12 last that year. The case, that, yeah, they, that they went on the like case. a six-game no. run, five, six-game run where they beat not. good teams. Yeah, and he was the big part of that. And that's, once again, why I'm just like – all right, if it's garbage time, why ain't everybody else got garbage time stats like that? If, you know, anybody could have done that, why didn't any of the guys that we had here last year consistently do that? Justin Fields, right? Pull up Justin Fields' numbers from a year ago. Are they better or worse than Russell Wilson's numbers from a year ago? Worse. I get it. Justin Fields is younger. I get it. He's a sexier player. But let's not confuse potential with actual production here now. Because those are two different things. They both start with the letter P, but very different. A lot of potential. The production has not been nowhere near what this one has been. So that's just how I look at it. Whether we talking Russ last year, the year before that, and God forbid we go back to Seattle, we know what that was. So production is there still. It might not be as pretty as this or as much potential as this or even we threw Kenny in that convo, right? Because Kenny has potential. But there is a difference, and we've talked about that difference between what a player we – the Miles Garrett versus T.J. Watt argument, right? Man, Miles Garrett has the potential to be the greatest person to ever have played this game. But he is not more productive than T.J. Watt, who goes out there and is about to have 100 sacks in his career in the next four games and be the fastest person to do this since Reggie White. Potential, production. It's a lot of people that love how this looks, though, right? It's a lot of people that give this awards every day, right? Talks about how sexy it is. Talk about how good it could be, right? Come on, bro. Potential production. So I get it. Trust me, I get it. But it's a lot of people that didn't get fired behind potential, man. It's a lot of people get fired behind that. I lean inside with production, especially when it's proven production. Because a lot of dudes be waiting, 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 and this never turns into production. It just keeps looking good. And we know it's a lot more dudes that look like this that never get to this than it is the guys that actually reach this level. So until that or any of these other names reach that, yeah, I'm going to side with this one. I made a video related to what we're talking about right now, like last week. And my main message was, don't be so quick to move off of an all-time great. Don't be so quick to move off of what is known, what is great. I heard you say that before. Oh, yeah. Exa- oh, and I use that I as an example. That I use that as, as an example. Everyone ran seven out of town in sevens last year. But now here we are, fast forward two years. We literally have Russell Wilson on the roster coming off of 29 touchdowns. Mm-hmm. I, I think he finished with like the fifth best touchdown interception ratio mm-hmm. last year. The the passing touchdowns was eighth in the league. Yeah. Um, obviously, we know his resume, Super Bowl champion, all that stuff. Yeah. Like, that's sitting here right now. 
but we also have Justin Fields backing them up. But you know most of Steeler Nation, or I don't know, maybe it's 50-50 split, yeah. but they're – they want to see Justin Fields. They're like, the potential they're ready there. to move off Russ yeah. before the season even starts. Mm-hmm. And like, what I'm saying is like, bro, don't like, don't take what Russell Wilson is for granted. Come on, because man. here, here's the question. Here's what it really comes down to for me. If you're betting all your money mm-hmm. on this season coming up, and you know to get your money back, the Steelers have to have success. Whatever that means. It's let's just say winning the most games mm-hmm. between Russell Wilson, and Justin Fields. You got to put all your money down on one of these quarterbacks. Yeah, who are you picking? Come on, who are you picking right Come now? On, it's man. Russell Wilson. Why? Come because on, he wins games. You've already seen it. There's no guess. You already know what <laughs> like, this is. Like, he can win on. it from the jump. He can give you comebacks. He can give you clutch performance. He can give you in the postseason when it matters the absolute most. Like I think you're really foolish if you're putting all your money mm-hmm. on Justin Fields. And what what is the goal of this league? It's to win games. Herm Edwards, play to win the game, right? right? Yeah, some other people care about fantasy. Yeah, and they're like, yo, he he just looks setting back. stuff up for the yeah. next three, four years, whatever. I, I want to win games right. now. I'm like, we're built to win now. Russ gives you the chance, the best chance in my eyes right now to win. Now we'll see if Justin Fields can surpass that. And, and unless does, proven right. otherwise, if Russ right. sucks the first four, five, six right. months. But like as we sit here right now, that my money's on Russ. Case. Yeah. He hasn't sucked. That hasn't been the case. And like you said, I love how you say don't take what he's already done for granted. If what he did last year in Denver is his floor, if that's the worst, right, that's what he's washed. That's washed for us. Imagine if Justin Fields had that number, that type of season just a year ago. Yeah, yeah. Just, just imagine They're that. trading that. You see pick. what I'm saying? Just imagine that. They're if Russ fields. is so washed and so old and so is past his prime, it's like, yo, if Justin Fields just had that season that we're seeing as Russ's bad year, we're not even talking. Like, Fields ain't even here. They loving on Fields. Loving him. So, once again, don't take it for granted now. There are plenty of people that look like they can play in this league, that look like they could be superstars in this league, that never develop into that, man. And there are a lot of factors at that. It's a lot of factors. But when you see a dude that has actually crossed over to being one of those elites, you don't take that for granted, man. Because that takes crazy work to get to that and to sustain it. It's not like he just did it one year and flashed and came back out of there. No, 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 no. Russ did this. And kind of stand there, and now we're like, okay, how slowly can we make this exit out of this thing? Yeah, because it's not yeah. like Russ is Drew Brees at the end or Peyton Manning at mm-hmm. the end, where you can clearly see they, they don't have it anymore. Like their bodies are broken down; they can't yeah. throw the ball the same. Russ is throwing bombs. Nah, how about this? Say He's that still wasn't got the Russ, man. We we were just talking yeah. about the DK Metcalf video. That, that, exactly. It's coming out like a laser. Exactly. And, and th- Phil's has a stronger arm, but Phil's production in terms of throwing it consistently has not looked like Russ in stadium, whether we're talking Denver or anywhere else. And the thing is, too, we were just talking about it this weekend. What's funny about the Russ era in Denver is neither coach was meant for Russ. Mm-mm. Neither coach. Thank you. They brought in Hackett, and Who that was, was for, for Rodgers. Thank you. But they couldn't get Rodgers. It's like, uh-huh. all right, we, st- we still want to get an elite quarterback. So let's get so, Russ. Yeah, let's yep. get Russ. And Russ was banged up that whole first year. Mm-hmm. He's been on record saying that. Mm-hmm. And then this last one, Sean Payton, like they just brought in Sean Payton because he's a hell of a coach. He came out the booth. Yeah, right? he they they want Sean Payton for the future, the long term, yeah. like set the tone. And and if Russ just so happens to be a part of that, so be great. it. Yeah. But obviously they didn't mesh, and mm-hmm. they moved on from Russ. Mm-hmm. So again, I'm just trying to imagine like what can Russ be with something set up for him because I don't yeah I don't think he's washed yeah. and we got to see that when he was in Seattle he was he was awesome in Seattle and that's the beauty even of, last year he wasn't bad either obviously they, that's the beauty of football they play these games and they're recorded and we can go back and watch them and then they document the stats so when a person says oh this player is better than that player and we're like at what hey you might think that he's a better passer of the football all right cool let's just go look at the numbers cool let's go look at the tape that tells us exactly what we need to know right there. Now, we can project what we want to project, but the facts are the facts. Projections are projections. And I think that that's, you know, what we got to understand. But the youth is the youth. And, hey, man, if youth is the reason that you make a decision, well, I hope it works out great for you. But I personally don't think that that's the most conducive way to be successful in the NFL is if you make every decision solely based on youth. I think... There are multiple variables that do matter. And 
specifically in this Russ and Justin Fields situation, I think Russ has a lot that he's bringing to this situation that is going to make Justin Fields have to elevate himself. You can't be the same Justin Fields that he's been and think that that's going to beat out a Russ. That's not going to happen. But if he can look at what Russ is doing and take some of that with his athleticism, with his God-given traits that he does possess that a lot of dudes don't, then, yeah, he has a chance to go through the roof with this thing. But we've seen how many times when we talked about a receiver or a running back or this player or that player, and we'll name all of them same type of attributes and characteristics, but because they can't put it all together and produce and repeat process, it never comes to fruition. And then we're talking about those guys as what could have been or bust or we're saying, man, get up out of here. And that's first rounders all the way through this thing, man. And that's the thing. We live in a society where we want Justin Fields to develop in an instant. Oh, so, so, like, there's these reports that uh -huh. come out over, like, the last couple of weeks. They're saying, ah, oh, Justin Fields' yeah. footwork might be a little inconsistent. Maybe be, he's showing some inaccuracy. But we can see the, the traits. We see the athleticism. We see some wild throws. And I, I hear these reports. I'm like, all right, I'm not, like, that surprised. Yeah. Because that would be the same report you'd have on Justin Fields over these last three seasons yeah. with the Bears. That's, I think that's just where he is right now. Like, I would have liked to hear some maybe more positive reports. Mm -hmm. I know Omar Khan was saying Justin Fields looked great. But either way, it's OTAs right it's OTAs, now. OTAs, yeah. Up to this point, what do we know about Justin Fields? Mm -hmm. All right, he's inconsistent. He's yeah. got athleticism. Uh, you know, his play isn't as good, like, second half and the third and fourth mm -hmm. quarters and everything. So he needs to improve upon that. Yeah. Luckily, we don't have to bank this whole season on a Justin Fields. Very true. We have a Russell Wilson here. Because even if we even if we brought in Justin Fields and still with Kenny Pickett, like he's competing with Kenny Pickett. We're mm -hmm. just not handing the keys over no. to Justin Fields. Absolutely. And rightfully so. So that it, it goes back to everything we've just been talking about. Like, don't be so quick to move off of Russell Gee. Wilson. Like Justin Fields is your guaranteed solution for this season at quarterback. Right. Guaranteed. Like you know he's You know that? You got this. The way he's people do the way a lot of people talk about Justin Fields, that that's what it seems. That's how they think about it. But I know what I've seen these last three years and he does have that potential. And I think he's in a great spot to yeah. develop that potential with having a Russ in front of him. It doesn't have to be right now. It doesn't have yeah. to be Justin Fields is the franchise answer right now because relatively he's still young. Mm -hmm. We we move off these players so quickly. I watched a, a little documentary on like the Joe Montana Steve Young dynamic. Yeah, and like I'm not saying Russ is Joe Montana or Fields is Steve Young, yeah. but I could see the relation. I could see like the comparison in a way mm -hmm. where you have the established guy here, yeah. Russell Wilson. And then, like, Steve Young sucked Who's his first was, couple of years. That was very different than Montana, too. Yeah, and yeah. obviously, Steve mm -hmm. Young, athletic, got the arm, yeah. all that stuff, almost like a Justin Fields, mm -hmm. but sucked his first couple of years with the Bucks. But the Niners take on Steve Young to yeah. back up Montana, and it wasn't that they gave it mm -hmm. right away to Steve Young. They made him compete a little bit with Montana. Montana obviously wins out. Mm -hmm. He wins the Super Bowls and everything. But Steve Young was the backup for the 49ers for like five years. Yeah, before he took over. And then, and then he, the yeah, he was like 28, mm -hmm. 29, maybe even 30 mm -hmm. when he took over. Mm -hmm. But had this Hall of Fame career from yep. that point until his late 30s. So who's to say Fields couldn't do something like that? But it's just that in today's day and age and it's the microwave, sports, man. yeah, it's it just now, everything it, in, out. Yeah. yeah, and then you're out of – like if – you're not what we need you to be within like two, three years. You're just out of the you're league. Done. So this yeah. this could actually be amazing for Justin Fields mm -hmm. if he's patient with it. Yeah. Like it wouldn't be the worst thing if you're the backup here and Russ is successful, you know, to just sit and watch for maybe two, mm -hmm. three years. It wouldn't be the worst thing. It wouldn't. I get why you would maybe want an opportunity to compete and be a starter somewhere else. But, but we've seen multiple quarterbacks come in and have that type of ability where they did get a chance to sit. We said Mahomes. We talked about Rodgers. We talked about Jordan Love. Dudes that didn't start as yeah. soon as they got in. But when they finally did get that opportunity, they thrived. And that's something that he could be set up for very easily. I like the fact that they already have a good relationship in some capacity. And that is something that we do like. Because it doesn't work if those guys are beefing or if those guys are right. at odds. But as long as that healthy That's how it respect, was with Montana and Young, true. too. Yep, very they, true. they actually were pissed off at the coach at times. But it was yeah. like between them, it, mm -hmm. was, it was all good. Yeah, but it's like as long as they're healthy together, man – everything else can thrive in that because they're going to naturally push each other and this younger guy is going to naturally want to learn from this but trying to surpass it and that's going to make the og show up every single day being locked in because he knows i got to keep this dog up off me man 
And that's going to be just beautiful for this whole team because it trickles down. If you got that at the main position, which is quarterback, we all would agree, the most important position. That's why we talk about it so much, right? If you got those two dudes operating and they're the hardest workers in the room, man, there is no excuse for anybody else in that building. And that gives you that opportunity. Also, when you have that type of competition in that room, it makes you look down on everyone else and say, bro, there is no excuse for you to not feel like you can't compete for your job. If I'm competing every single day up here, what's your excuse? Show up, work, let's go. And that's the part that I do think that I do think is going to be just an added benefit across the board. But it's interesting, man. And I get it, though. I definitely can understand the argument of the youth and the excitement of uh, Justin Fields. And, hey, man, what if you could get it ahead of time, right? Oh, now we got him. We're great. We we're, won. We're talking excitement. That We're talking about, like, feelings right. and stuff. Like, yeah, it's like, I want to win games. Right. I, want, I want the bottom line. Yeah, hey, I'm like, get, let me... If you can show I'm excited me about fields this too. stuff, then yeah. But I want to win games. Like. Right. These are just like happy thoughts like Never yeah. Neverland. Until I see it come to fruition, I'm kind of cool letting it sit here and just work in the background like Mason Rudolph did. Work in the background. And then, hey, when you get your next opportunity, show us something different. Think about how we felt Mason before the season versus after the season. Night and day. Night and day. So I'm like, for Fields, man, keep cooking. Keep doing what you're supposed to do. And when it's time, you gonna get your chance. But I'm not, I'm not with the premature. Just throw him out there just because he's younger thing. No, nah, heck, no, nah, man. No, no, Mm-mm. for sure. I'm with you yeah. on that. I don't know how we started to uh, talk about all that. that. That was a good combo. Shout out to uh, Noriega, man. That Is was that him. what it was? Yeah, it was Noriega. It was Noriega. He, he he's real adamant about Justin Fields. He he loves 25. He's like, yo, I would take 25 because yeah, he's just younger. And what happens in the next five years when he leaves and Russ is here getting 40 million? It's like. If that's the case, that means Russ is already cooked for us. So no that's a great problem to have. Justin Fields still in that same analogy, though, is still going to have to prove that he can do what Russ has done. Nothing would have changed. We would just know that we've already proven ours. That's the only thing that would be different. So whatever team Justin Fields would go to would be still sitting here saying, can Justin Fields yeah. lead? Can Justin Fields do 17 games? Can Justin Fields win a Super Bowl? Can Justin Fields take his team back to a Super Bowl? Win a playoff Can game. Justin Fields win a playoff game? Can Justin Fields get on comeback runs in the postseason? These are all the things we've already comeback seen runs in the fourth Russ quarter. do. These are the things we've already seen Russ do. There's no speculation. We don't have to ask, is he going to get too nervous in a big game? Nah, we've already seen him multiple big games. This one, that's the one you can have the questions about. So it don't matter if it was this year or 10 years from now, man. Still got them saying questions, baby.